right, guys, welcome back to another day on the uh, channel. Working on the Clapper 7.3 today. Running and making the fuel lines for it. We also got a new fuel tank strap that is shorter. I just got to get a longer bolt to get that bolted in. Uh, I'm still missing the studs for the brake lines. I think I might know where they are. Although I'm at the point where I'm just going to put old hardware in and make it work. So it's gotten me to that point where I'm that pissed at it. And yeah, fuel lines. I gotta get the fuel tank strap in. My goal tonight is to have the brake system done, have the fuel system done, have the accessory brackets. So I was missing two bolts, which I threw in. I got got them from the shop that he was storing them at. Because this truck was taken apart at a different shop. So we were kind of fighting that, putting everything back together. But it's slowly going back together. And this thing should be out of here within a week. My goal is to even have it out maybe even sooner. Because we really don't have that much left. And once it's out of here, I'm going to go store it in above the barn until, it's re until the cab's done. So really, let's get to it. Remember, like and subscribe. And make sure you give my boys Bonin's Landscaping Repair, or Diesel Repair, and other blah blah blah. He's in the description. I don't know his full name. I know I'm a bad friend. And that's CT Farmer. Links will be in the description. So as it turns out, they have two different sizes up at the motor, two different sizes at the tank, but those metal lines are the same size. So here we go. Fuel system is plumbed. And now this isn't your standard fuel system. These trucks factory had a front and rear tank. I have simplified this truck to only having a front tank. So normally this plug here actually is in the harness for it. There's a selector switch, selects front or rear tank. The reason I'm only running 
a single tank in this this truck has getting a flatbed so putting two filler necks in is going to be kind of a pain as it is and back here where the second tank would be upon I'm mounting an air tank an air compressor a bunch of stuff besides the fact that this truck is not really going to be doing a lot of long hauls so I really don't need the extra capacity so I'm willing to sacrifice capacity for convenience in the future, may I change my mind? Absolutely, which is why I did it this way, so I can easily change my mind. So, very simple, rubber lines run down to a set of factory metal lines that run inside the frame rail. Which run up here to another set of rubber lines. I lost the metal lines that go on the motor, so I just ran metal lines up here. I'll take this off, I had that on for clearance checking. Now you return here and the suction goes right to the pump down there and it eliminates a lot of the metal rubber bullshit quick connect stuff. Not worried about too much pressure being on these. Now I've given them yanks, they're not coming off. Because well, I'm keeping the factory fuel pump on this, so which means all these lines, the suction is on pure suction. There is no pump in this, so it's just sucking all the way from the tank all the way to the pump. And then the return is under very little pressure because it's a return. So I'm not worried about it blowing apart. The only thing I'm slightly worried about is heat, but hopefully those should survive just fine there. If I have issues, I can always switch to metal. The reason I'm not running metal is I found it extremely difficult to find metal lines that would um, from Ford. Fun fact, the metal lines I'm running in the frame rail are actually off of a crew cab truck, so it's a longer fuel line which works out in my family favor I bent them up slightly by hand here and it just gets it further back so I had to run less rubber line to the tank but now Ford wanted an astronomical amount of money for the lines it's really hard to find them aftermarket without paying a lot of money so this was actually cheaper to go all rubber it would have been cheaper to run rubber lines down the frame rail <laughs> So that's why I did it that way. And I just wanted to show you guys that system now that it's in place. I got to find the hose clamp so I can finally put my spider in for good. That'll be a nice thing to check off the list. Got to run and grab the bolts to bolt that valve cover down and the breather on that for good. And we're getting closer and closer and closer. I mean, we got plow mounts. I got to find new front springs, but that may not happen while it's here. I might just do that later because I, I'm taking up a buddy shop. I don't like doing that. So I'd rather get it done, get it out of here. So I'll just, I'm going to keep going until I slow down. Once I slow down, I'm done for a while and I'll just move it out of here. I'd rather do that so he can get his stuff done because he runs and operates his own plowing business. He needs a shop to fix his stuff. But yeah. So, I'm going to move on to the next thing on the list, which i got to check. I might have to make a parts run.
guys so as you guys can see here got a lot of shit crossed off the list not really it doesn't seem like it but we are crossing things off the list a lot of projects done and hopefully very soon this thing will be done here and we can get into bodywork videos I will be yeah you guys will see those after this is done at this point because this is going fast and I'm happy about it Still gotta do the rear end swap, waiting on my new rear end for that. But brake lines are ran to the back. Be starting on the front end tomorrow, that should be fun. I'll be wearing my headband a lot for that. So you won't get much, you'll get a kind of a different view for once. All right guys, we're gonna use this as a stopping point in between videos. So remember, like, subscribe, comment below, read the description. And yeah, see you guys in the next one.